गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एंड आवर रिजोरी सर एंड माई सेल्फ आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम डॉक्टर आनंद देव तिवारी इन फोर्थ स्पेशल गेस्ट लेक्चर सीरीज आई एम हियर टू इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर आनंद एंड फर्स्ट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू गाइज डॉक्टर आनंद इज कमिंग बैक टू इंडिया आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स आफ्टर गेटिंग द साइंटिस्ट पोजिशन इन क्लेव एंड क्लिन so dr anand com completed his bsc and msc from gorakhpur university gorakhpur from in 2002 to 2005 and then he moved to delhi university for mp program and joined professor rk sharma in delhi university chemistry department after that after completing the mphil he moved to uh university of johannesburg south to south africa for completing the phd program in there he joined professor becky v mamba and then after completion of the phd program in 2012 he moved to university of florida with very world famous professor professor ellen petresti who is very well known uh, retrocyclic chemist and medicinal chemist and after completion he is post doctorate in 2014 he moved to uh, cleveland clinic and he joined as a research associate in there and now recently he joined as a uh, scientist before one month ago he joined as a scientist in cleveland clinic clinic usa he have lots of award like uh, CSIR Diamond Diamond Jubilee Award in India and uh, South Africa and USA collaboration award for common wealth fellowship in South Africa then he get the best research scholar in South Africa Benjamin Seleno research award in uh, USA and he has lost of publication in various book journals like journal of medicinal chemistry european journal of medicinal chemistry biogenic chemistry journal of blood cancer discovery he is the editor of different journals he has two book chapters and two books anyways there is so many list of the publication and uh, all awards due to the lack of time we cannot explain here so now i would like to dr anand to deliver the lecture please welcome to dr anand थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जनरस इंट्रोडक्शन एंड जरा मुझको आइए कि आप लखनऊ में हैं सो आई एम सो हैप्पी टू सी एंड दिस वाज माय माई क्वाइट लॉन्ग टाइम एंड अ वेरी गुड फ्रेंड सो इज से सो वेरी गुड थिंग अबाउट मी रियली नाइस टू बी एट होम दिस इज माय होम आई एम फ्रॉम गोरखपुर एंड आई ट्रेवल ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर एंड Really feel good after coming here. So, um, and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Misra, for this opportunity to be talking with you, the young minds and the faculty members here at the Lucknow University. So, first, uh, I would like to introduce uh, where I work. So, uh, because this research institute is basically of the medicine research institutes. So, most of the people are not aware about the treatment clinic. But this is, I'm gonna give a resemblance like the, this is a ants, uh, but uh, in the uh, patient care, and they have a research uh, wings called a London Research Institute, and we have a lab, satellite lab, my private environment in a toxic cancer center. So this is a toxic cancer center. This is the main campus of the treatment clinic, and. I'm associated with the translational hematology uh, department. It's led by Dr. Nasalski, and he's a well-known MD uh, doctors for MBS and PNH. He discovered a tag gene and many more gene, and I'm a very opportunity. I have the opportunity to work on the tag gene, and we develop a molecules where we are stop progression of a cancer cells through the epigenetic modifications and epigenetic approach of our targeting the cancer cells. So, uh, uh, 
Yeah, so I would like to start with uh, this uh, from this is Loka from the Sharakya. And it's uh, reason is that a Deepo Bhachan Dhantam Panjaram Chak Sushati Padmam Bhachat Kujayate Tadashya. Well, what you eat, you become that. And that says uh, saying with the synonyms like the light lamp is eat darkness and a produce a kaja, a black. So this is a uh, very important thing that how the epigenetics is discovered through that one. What we eat, where we live, its effects are epigenetics. So what is the epigenetics? First thing we have to start learning the research to start asking questions. So what is the epigenetics? Genetics is that what we are today. And epigenetics what we want to be tomorrow. What we eat, where we live, what we do is going to define our phenotypes and that affects in a various modifications on your phenotypes that become such a cancer. We call it is a mutation also. So let's start with the, how our genetics is affecting. So we are going to start from the chromosome. So chromosome is a chromatin, uh, chromatins and then histone proteins and then DNA is coming out of so there is a three kinds of uh, modifications that are coming to the epigenetics. It's called uh, the divided in a, like a uh, writer, eraser, and uh, readers. So writer is like that. Who is going to be to the modification to the chemicals? These proteins and enzymes are responsible for that. And the second one is that how we want to remove it. Like we have a rescue mechanism in our body that how we want to be remove those modifications. Second one, how we are going to read this modification to identify to remove it. So it's called a reader. And then there's a, a short cell that what is the most important? This is a lot of modifications coming on. But we are focused on only the acetylations and methylations. So I narrow down this one to a particular type of a, a modification. We call it acetylene, acetylations, and methylation. It happens on a board. Uh, like the uh, histones and uh, DNA also. And now it's like, it's a big picture and a red diagrams of all these things like how the readers, what kind of uh, enzymes is called uh, writers, readers and erasers. And there is a few drugs that already have been approved for embryos treatment where they are using this small molecules to remove this chemical modifications are uh, stopped then. So these are the therapeutic opportunity we have. And we look at uh, one of them, people are either they want to target like uh, readers, writers, or erasure proteins. So that's how we come in the picture and we focus on the cat. Cat is a one of the translocation or 10, 11 translocation on the chromosomes. It's a frame set mutations that form and is a uh, loss of our functions. So when DNMP1 is a one of the uh, writer enzyme, when they put a methylation marks on DNA, the text come to the rescue and that remove the methylation mark on cytosine that position. These are all dioxidase enzymes that is a, have a RNA catalytic system and they come as a family form like called TET1, TET2, and TET3. Here is this opportunity created when you have a three kind of a, a Families. And tattoo is one of the major uh, enzyme that is responsible for most of the demethylations. So even if tattoo is the only one there that going to rescue the cell. But then there is a tattoo and tattoo is also there. There is no mutation is found in tattoo and tattoo. Only the mutation found in tattoo. And this is a, a chemical. Here is a, some examples. Uh, this is an example of like, uh, how much mutations of a tattoo form in MBS and AML. Because my department is uh, mostly uh, focused on the liquid tumor. We are works on the blood cancer and our approach is epigenetics, mutations, and all that. So we are focused on the MBS and AML. Yeah, I have another project where we work on a solid tumor, non-small cell lung carcinoma, and uh, other tumors also. But in this uh, seminar, I'm just going to talk about my this tech project that I love so much. And uh, so this is a, 
and discuss about how the chemical modifications are exposed in the DNA level. The cytosine is one of the nucleotides uh, uh, where is a fifth methylation positions when a DNMT is comes uh, put the methylation mark on the fifth position. Uh, I would like to get a bit here. I won't lost it. So let us come up and this is uh, a rescue team. Uh, So when DNMD is a put a methylation and it's of the transcription, so that is comes to the rescue to recover the 5 methyl cytosine. And it's come a, a sequential uh, oxidation through uh, methylation through the pipe HMC, like methyl hydroxy, then aldehyde, and then carboxy. And then there is a two pathways called this is accessory repair theory and GDC pathway. Uh, we get it a cytosine recovered to get it a normal cell transcriptions. Uh, Here is a, a three family describes. So most of the things that like one and type two and type three is have like a similar kind of a catalytic code, but the length of the protein is a different. That's how they are a different members, and their activity depends on that. And now this is how the tech mutation is causing the malloid progression. So, and these enzymes, and uh, there is a different kind of uh, uh, like a 2-HG. 2-HG uh, is one of the uncometabolites from IBS mutations coming that uh, is also as work as a tet inhibitor because it's used as an alpha beta glutate that's uh, one of the core factor for uh, tet enzyme. And vitamin C is one of the uh, very important uh, molecules that is a rescue, is, is works. But we have a piece of paper that uh, like vitamin C is good in a such a condition, one kind of a, a mutation just only works. Uh, not, it cannot be uh, defined as like uh, uh, universal. So that uh, is removed. And then we start this project. We had a concept that we need a tech activator. So we wanted to rescue the cell. Okay, when the methylations are coming from DNMT, we wanted to remove a methylation very fast and rescue the cell. But uh, accidentally and luckily, this molecules come in my hand that we started innovating the tech. And that was not what we are looking for. But when we look at that, and there is a difference we found it that is selectively killing the only cancer cells for a particular type of mutations, not the normal cell. And that was a holy grail. And then we started exploring, oh, okay, now we have to go in that direction to look at the that inhibitions. And this is how we found it like the, when there is a normal Y types, so there is a, a normal differentiation, so they're coming on normal purposes. And when there is a, a that uh, expression is changed within the different cell life, and then the malloid progression is, comes out, and that will continue that way. So we come up with the concept, okay, if you are going to target a tech mutant cell, and to stop the progressions of a cancer cell, this is going to be uh, one of the uh, a cure for the cancer. And then we start working on the concept, so where we have to start? So there is a few uh, animators was available, but these, most of them like came as the byproduct of the PEP cycles or our oncometabolites, like the 2HG. 2HG is one of the uh, oncometabolites. It's come from the IDH2 mutation, it's a gain of function mutation, where it's converted to hydroxy group rate to one, uh, to hydroxy group rate to, and then there was uh, energy. Energy was a synthetic molecules. That is, this becomes from last 20 years, uh, it was uh, like not 20 years. Then the TED gene was uh, discovered in 2009. And then they come up with, okay, here, uh, so they come up with this idea that, oh, energy is good. It's had a good activity around like a 20 micromolar, but selectivity was very poor. It is uh, going to elevate another 20 enzyme. That's because you uh, use a 2 oxy as a cofactor. And then there was a few rate 
and uh, succinate, these are the byproducts and they cannot be used as uh, therapeutic molecules. And this molecule comes from the uh, University of Pittsburgh, the, the Professor Mishra's Old Institute, where he has a postdoctoral uh, training with the Kamerus now. But this guy didn't came out with a structured activity relationship and he don't have uh, any uh, concept of synthetic methodology and uh, getting attached to the cell line. So we combined all this theory and this paper was published in 2020, 2021 in the PMH where they screened around 65,000 molecules, come up with the one molecule and then did a bunch of experiment and walk away. So that was what I approached what I was called training in a synthetic medicine chemistry. So, and this molecules come uh, off catch. It was a huge trump and that they say, oh my god, we got it, we got it, very good, very good. But right now there is a referendum coming out like, oh, this, this was uh, this was an off target. It was hitting something else and they were saying, oh, it's, uh, it hit uh, dead. So they are struggling with themselves right now. So I come up with the idea and we did a molecular docking and look at that. And okay, we need to look at the energy. And if you wanted to know what a problem with energy that is a mic on, we wanted to modify. And that's is stopping to the hunting other target. So we said, okay, let's keep it like a straight, simple five carbon chain that looked like a, a two oxy blueprint, but not two oxy blueprint. Then we inspired from the two hydroxy blueprint. We said, okay, we want to keep it two hydroxy blueprint, but because it's on from a double light, so we need to make some few changes there that is going to make it a different. Then I found a paper where there was a, they were talking about like, okay, two oxyglucrate can mimic a methylene. So that idea came in my mind and I put up two methylene and that's when I started creating there. And then I started challenging this molecule with a different synthetic chemistry. So first, the, I wanted to uh, rule out every single thing in a five carbon. So I move on this molecule with the limitation of a five carbon frame with a one hydrogen modification. One hydrogen up, one hydrogen down. And uh, then I made this uh, molecule, uh, this one first molecule, I made it this chloride molecule with the methane. I was thinking, okay, let's uh, resemble the chloride, it might be work as a maybe hydroxy, and uh, methane is going to be the uh, keto. And this works. So this uh, little bit, uh, I got a uh, encouragement and then I said, okay, let me put a double bond inside the plane and see how that works. I put a band, I put a inside the plane of the chain, I lost the activity. Not the last the whole activity, but it was there, no selectivity, but we cannot use it because this is a one of the vector. So that was a ruled out. And I started a bunch of us in getting to the screen and okay, what we are reaction to do that we had a magnetic uh, and the bromide and oxidation and reductions like nuclear fields in nuclear field substitution. I use a, a chemistry as a synthetic tool to address Hamadkan problems. Uh, these are uh, other molecules where I wanted to put uh, like a two uh, chlorine, I wanted to do at least chlorine as a two hydroxy. So create some other molecule like that we uh, and then I wasn't a stop when I got my uh, best molecule, it's called uh, NIMA. And uh, then I give the challenge to this molecule to create a, a people isomers to RNS. So I want to see that how this molecule RNS is fit into the and uh, the optical isomers and studio studio specific uh, setting in the protein. And uh, I would love to share this spectra because I did a very hard work uh, this, uh, to purify it. I purified this molecule for a column, silica column. And after that, we did a PLC, but I wanted to be a, a, make a good heat. So uh, I did it. So you can see the mixture here was a two different, and that was a, my indicator after that. You see, both isomers was separated down. After that, we did a CD and all those things to uh, make sure that we have the right isomers. And this is my favorite uh, slides. That's what I love to do. 
that changes every single aspect of the molecule and structural feature of the molecules and see their activities, how these are changing. That's the structural activity relationship is my favorite uh, things and we get the support from our computer modeling and uh, the structural biologists. So we sit down with a team like we have a, a medicine doctor, we have a structural biology, we have a biochemist, we have an in vivo experiment with a like, uh, vet and everything. We look at every single aspect of the molecule, how we want to modify, we come with all the data to me and I come up with the idea, okay, this is my next molecule. So it's time taking, but it's fun to work. So this is a one DMG uh, field challenge. So look at that. We have a keto and everything. This is a one of the core substrate. So no inhibition to the tap because this is a feed to the tap. So this is our negative control, you can say. First DMG that was known for a better meter and the basis of a lot of research of what we do for a competitive generation of the two oxygen rate. Then I said, okay, let's do all this in the street and look at the succinct is the Oxford manner. So this is a seven person. And then I put the double bond in, in the plane and I lost the activity. It was less than 50%, I'm going to say I lost the activity. And that was, uh, we had an uh, average of a 20 and 50 and end of the three dilutions. Uh, he works on the TSP cell line. TSP cell line is a one of the uh, nasty blood cancer cell line. The second one is a DMOG, like a heart, heart of your glutate, that's a one of the oncometabolites. Second one is uh, my gate. So this one was a 68%. So that was a very good molecule. And the beauty of this molecule that it slowly affect on the Get mutant cell line, not the body line. So you throw the molecules on a cancer cell line of the dead expression according to so you start killing the dead cell, uh, cancer cells, you're not going to touch the body, uh, white type or normal cells. You look at the bone marrow, they are very happy. But cancer cells, we started dying. And then we started challenging. I said, okay, I'm going to challenge the first two hydroxyl group rate. This might be a key to the gate. And I uh, converted this uh, to an oxy to the key, uh, oxy, keto. And we lost the uh, activity. Then I said, OK, might be, this is a key, methylene. And then I added here, keeping a 2-hydroxy, again I lost the activity. So this is a combination of a methylene and a 2-hydroxy is a key for the growth. And then there was a, a lot of literature where they were using a cyclopropyl to challenge the methylene group. That's why I use a cyclopropyl for the exothermal reaction and no inhibition. So then next molecule was, I said, okay, let's go and challenge the hydroxy uh, chemistry there. And I'm going to say, okay, second meter say uh, hydroxy with a one methyl substitution. And we increase a little bit uh, activity for say, oh, this is the way to go. And then I started making a bunch of molecules, challenging that one. And this one. But as soon as I increase the uh, carbon line, I lost the activity. So this looked like, oh, secondary hydroxy is not the way to go. Then I put in a mole there to see that how this works and that is aligned with the, the same results. Then I said, okay, let's remove the other side of uh, hydroxy with the uh, keto with the hydroxy. And we again uh, lost the activity. I put it in the plane, no activity. So that was a four carbon, this is a five carbon. Chloride had a good activity, but it just might be a chloride, might be working as a electronic or something like that. That's why it's coming. I challenged the fluorine and that lost the whole activity. Then I put two for no changes. I want to see that I might change the secondary and get that activity of same one percent. And then I move a completely hydroxy. Okay, let's see that methylene is magic, but no, there was nothing. And 
Then I said, okay, remove the methylene, keep the hydro, uh, ketone, and reduce that uh, methylene to the methylene group. And I tried it. This is like, those, these are the emissions. They uh, work as like the two oxy group. They work like this. So this was no way to work. And this one also, I uh, found this molecule uh, from Australia level, where the, it has a combined uh, hybrid nature of uh, DMOG, uh, like the, and methylene group. And that was also, don't have a good activity. So this is uh, uh, my whole picture, and we found it, okay, we got it, and you can see that like, it was a challenge with every single aspect of the five power one, up and down, like whatever the activity, what is the key to get into there, where is the structure, what the structural feature of this molecule can be uh, a And now we figured it out, okay, this was a whole assay was designed in a, I think it's a small room, but it shouldn't be standing there. That's fine. So, everyone can hear me now, now and clear? I don't think so, I did that one. Okay, so now we uh, filtered this five compounds and we said, okay, this uh, this essay was a design in itself. Might be something else that activities are coming out of it. Then we purified the dead protein. We purified the dead protein and did some uh, steto inhibition in the selfie system to see the specificity. So those molecules were having like a 70 3% uh, uh, inhibitions in the cell system, they are down here. So they had some few after effects that was they making them a better molecule, but uh, my molecules uh, is like a 16 or 17 S, these are the stereoisomers, and that was a 2A is a uh, my molecule, it stacks uh, 10 macromolar in the cell uh, system. Now, uh, we look at the, the stereoisomers here. They do stand in the same activity as their racemic uh, counterpart. So that means like there is uh, this molecule and this inhibition is coming like uh, it's not a stereoisomer. So that, uh, that problem will be even ruled out. We want to stop there that, okay, is uh, that inhibition is coming through uh, system. We look at that how much binding activity is coming. Like we have a biocode where we run the protein and the molecules together and look at the small temperature range that how this binding constant is coming out of this one. So we look at our best molecules there and see that how the binding activity with the trend proteins is coming. So we found that our uh, lead molecule 2A uh, is coming uh, is coming as a best binder uh, in the protein. Uh, I want to tell you this, uh, this molecule uh, 2A is uh, commercially available in supply rich. So they are selling it right now and its uh, trade name is at 10x76. And uh, 76 was my good book page number. So <laughs> it's a very good, uh, they are selling like a $20,000 right now. And uh, we, uh, I wrote a patent on we want to stop there, we look at that, okay, we see the protein, we see the binding, we see the cell system, cell free system. We said, okay, let me look at that, like, what is the uh, mass spectrometry is coming to change to this protein in, uh, numbers, and how they are binding with this, uh, we compete with the two oxyglutrate, and that's how we approve the mechanism, this is a non, uh, non covalent reversible uh, inhibitor in competitive to the two oxyglutrate. So if you put a 2 oxy group into the molecule, you can rescue the cell of this catenation. And we had a gene mapping on this thing. This was a published in a blood cancer discovery. And this was a published in a, that was a biopaper involved in blood cancer. So this is a biological data we supported that, okay, if we really hit in the tent, so how we are hitting the tent, how we gonna see that, so we had like a genetic knockdown and uh, knocking with the, with the CRISPR and all that things. We look at that when there is that is no bad, how that molecule is affecting and how it's not affecting. And 
we look at a different cell lines with a different data expressions. So when there is a load as to load data expression, our molecule works in the past. That's how we found it out like in a can you can supply this molecule to be a better molecule. And that's how we created a synthetic methodology concept for a cancer cell line. So Something is become a cancer because there is a mutation. So we want to keep the mutant uh, cell line so there is we can stop this cancer progression. So these are the data that supports the tech knockout and knock, uh, knocking and are different uh, low expressions of the tech. So here is a different cell line with a different tet expressions. This is the tet expressions. And when you see that uh, there is a low tet expression, my molecules works better there. So right now, from now I'm going to remember that molecule is a data synthesis. So we said, okay, we got a good data on the biochem data for data uh, expression, protein data expression. We found it okay. This is a good binding to the protein. We found this uh, elevation in the surface system, in the cell system. We said, okay, let's look at the normal uh, human bone marrow. So we had an access to the patient samples. We bring the patient samples of a tetrudent cell uh, patients and a white type. We mixed together and then we treated it with a control and our molecules and we did a close isolate in the cell populations and we use the body for normal cell line and cancer cell line. We found it like in the control, uh, in our, when we use our molecule, we have a less Tetrudent population cells and a more pipeline. So we are selectively targeting a tetrudent cell line. And these are the flow data. Uh, please do not ask questions from this one. These are some biochemistry for me, but yes, we get some part of the projects. And we said, okay, that was an in vitro data. We just extracted the bone marrow, did it, all these things. We not stop there. We look at that. Okay, let's go to the new remote and uh, we created a zero block model. Zero block model is called we uh, take a, a patient samples, a cancerous patient samples, and put it in the animals, and we grow a similar phenotype of the cancer cells in the urine. And they started treating with our molecule, and then we uh, set the mouse, we look at that, what is it, uh, cell population, we found it out that the tetrudent cell population is reduced and my type is increased. So, as a human cell, so you can uh, really look at the flow psychometry and these are the data on like how uh, a different uh, cell line population is going to increase in the case. And that was uh, one of the problem I talked about that what is the problem with the energy. Energy was uh, a good inhibitor but it's going to hit another tw another 22 uh, oxygen and yeah. So here is our uh, molecule is other 20 oxygenase we uh, take like a panel of the enzyme, uh, so the enzymes, and we found it out it's hitting only the tet, tet1, tet2, tet3. And it's just not tet1, tet2, tet3. We're hitting specifically to the tet1. That's how we get a, uh, this uh, synthetic lethality concept where we are hitting the tet molecule. Because with the tet2 mutations, cell line, tet2 is already down. And tet2 is enough to rescue any cell. But if tet2 is already down, you hit, then TET3 and TET1 come to rescue the cell. If you want to kill the TET1 or a TET2, then cell cannot survive. And that's how that TET will just survive the time. So that's our concept and mechanism that how our molecule works in the different uh, things. So this, this was actually this graph that how we are getting this uh, TET will just okay. And this is our model, that uh, working model and molecular modeling that how we uh, we open a gate to uh, develop for more people that come in the pictures. Like we already have within a year like 50 scientists and some people. And they are started working on it. And we had a patents, uh, all these things. They, and that's why the sigma average is a cell in this molecule, but people are asking. So this is the inhibition mechanism, how this two uh, oxy glutarates comes from the gap cycles that work as a cofactor and RN by RN core for inhibitions and jams, use the oxygens to make it a 5-5-oxygen uh, cytosines and then how the uh, use part from the TED, we come up with the TED, TED 76 and this is the mechanism, the 
how we can use the tech community and establish that and set up professions. So what is the, this is the conclusion that how we are treating the tech academic domains and it helps to stop the malwares and professions in particular type of communication. So this is, comes as a very personalized medicine and there is a one particular of mutations and it's like tech mutations come like the second most mutated in the cancer cells. So this is uh, very good, uh, very good. I am doing the research and a long way to that and this is the first time when someone is started working to a specific uh, tech mutant. Uh, any mutants are lying respectively and most of like we works with a lot of doctors we say oh, we are like killing the patients in that if the patient is on the medicine is gonna live only three years with no medicine it might be five years. So if we come with a non-toxic approach of the cancer treatment, this is the key, like our motto of the department, we don't want to kill the patient, we want to kill the cancer cells. So this one is a way to go. That's why I say it's a future in medicine. And that's for our first time medicine that what this is nice for. And uh, how we are treating the impact. Just, I'm not talking about that. Uh, we're doing a great job. So other people also, we have a whole lot of patients on these molecules and uh, it's in the national patients. Uh, so it's just not a risk that we find that patent in Europe, patent in uh, America, patent in all over the world. So this is a worldwide patent we call. And uh, so we come up with this molecule with the televisions and this guy is a commentator, he's a philosopher commentator who writes for this journal as a commentary for uh, patents coming from the different pharmaceutical companies and pharmaceutical institutes. He really appreciated my work and our work. So uh, this is a this is another paper, uh, like we split that paper, biology side was published in the blood cancer discovery and uh, Chemistry side was published with the Darwin and Cap. And this is the Tetai 76 Sigma which is selling like, uh, and this is the uh, impacts indicated through this one. And uh, a lot of our media updates come out and appreciated our work. Uh, we were so humbled to be acknowledged of our work in this community. These are like my previous works that I'm, uh, I feel good about all them. So this work was uh, developed by Dr. Professor Adam on Kathraski. And uh, this paper was uh, uh, published after his death. So we can uh, put his name there. So, uh, and so this work was, and this uh, paper was also uh, from the professor, professor Kathraski. And uh, this, so much so he's a really amazing person. I'm so so humbled that uh, I had an opportunity to work with the Professor Kathraski. He is like one of the legendary professors in organic heterocyclic chemistry. Till living, uh, no one had touched that uh, number, what he had. He published 2,400 publications. 250 PhD students, 2,000 postdoc at the age of 85. And uh, I was uh, one of the guys you see in the last time. So after that, uh, it was, he's an amazing guy. He was a bleeding by his nose, and he was still sitting in the meeting. After he said, Prof, you can go home. He said, no, my name is this and then I will go. Next day, he didn't go back. So that was a dedication. He's always inspired to me. I was so lucky to be involved with him. And uh, this is all my, uh, this work also from Professor Katraski. We made it an team work with uh, and he the conjugates. He's, uh, he's a very famous for vacuum working chemistry. He's well known for that one. He developed where we use a chloride as a as solutions. If you use a vacuum trichord, I think the most of the other things that comes to know that vacuum trichord properties uh, from that. So I want that. This is uh, this one I'm also uh, so good about that one. Where I was working in a case version with the university. Uh, where uh, Mahesh Gupta, Prof. Mishra's friend, is there, still there. And I was working in the imaging sciences and uh, neuroscience where we were looking at the zinc for a particular process. And uh, that drug is uh, right now in a clinical trial. So um, I, I, I was not a part of that patent, so I lost it. But yeah, 
I added this all work and uh, we uh, published a huge in like 10 power of that in uh, two years. Uh, we works on the spinal cord injury. We got the spinal cord injury model where this molecules like if someone has a spinal cord injury, they capture their body, you put this molecules, you can look at their back, like how much body damage. It's a very, very great tool. Right now they look at the MRI and MRI cannot tell you what is the, how much value is it taking. But if this molecule is there, you can really look at that how much value is caught in. So it can help. There is a few drugs are available, but it's not, uh, you are not going to tell that how much uh, disease progression you are going or how much you recover yourself. So there, this uh, research gap is filled by this molecule is called uh, uh, FBDAS. EDAS is one of the molecules. Uh, Dr. Yang Wong, he is running a clinical trial in the clinical for this one. This is another paper we look at that uh, where we uh, uh, do the post on studio of that type. So we look at the radioisotopes, we made the radioisotopes F18. So C11 molecules in the clinical trial, we already have a backup of for F18 because F18 has a better supply. So this is one of the patent, uh, I love that one, and uh, is not published yet, so I cannot discuss the chemistry and his output, but uh, this is a groundbreaking thing. This is, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about this one, where I'm working from last six years for this molecule. I have one molecule where we can manage the cell from cancer to the normal cell. So we're really working at a co repressor and a co uh, co-activator of the transcription factor where the stem cell differentiate from a cancer cell to the normal cell. We really work at the gate where when it turns to the cancer cell, instead of us uh, going to the cancer cell, we're gonna minus the diverse to the normal cell. We look at the beautiful daughters are there, we are ready to go, we are just because a uh, lot of money involved there. Uh, the guy, Dr. Yuga, he owns a billion dollar company. So <laughs> we are not going to disclose that until uh, unless we really have the in vivo cases. So we are not going. I'm holding this publication for last six years. So this is uh, one thing. And this is uh, my uh, mentors and my teams. So this is Dr. Charles Lever Masilaski, who discovered the technology. That is one of the big things, but he discovered many things. But more, uh, basically, he discovered a TED gene that by um, he is a uh, 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 all over the renowned scientist, over 800 and 900 publications. He's MD and he has many years in new publications. Uh, he holds R35, like uh, 50 year, uh, over 100 crores funding. So he's an institutional funding. And uh, I direct report to him. and. Uh, is like a, uh, Dr. Cha is uh, another uh, my collaborator. He holds a R1. So the morning to write that made it, he got a R1 for that, two R1. Uh, we published one of the general, uh, general of clinical, uh, clinical investigations. We got a one R1 for the impact and one R1 for the catalyzer disease. So he holds a two R1 where I'm a, uh, a, sh a shareholder there. And uh, so we have uh, other. Uh, Tau Foundations, Parasano, these are the foundation awards. We have all for this, like uh, the differentiation pattern uh, that I was talking about. We have a Parasano material, like uh, Tokaros. And uh, he's, uh, he is a uh, Dr. Jasper, he's is my mentor. He's really such a nice guy. He nourished me from last six years. Uh, last week he retired. Now I am uh, I'm a, I'm a sad but happy. Yeah. Now I need a group. <laughs> so, so he wasn't making a fun of me, but uh, it's good. He's a nice guy. And this is Dr. Logan, he's MD. I share a project with a differentiating one. Uh, he's a, he's a, owns a company, he's a one of the medicine, he's a big hit in the second test uh, second in the He's an academic teaching, uh, a very dollar guy. And, uh, this is a, I am with Dr. Jovan's teams, and here we are, I'm with Dr. Richard teams. So, uh, Dr. Majeski is a, he's an MD, and uh, he's a, all the research is run by uh, Dr. Chow. 
So that's how the two different groups uh, collaborated and give a benefit in the cluster supports. And um, thank you for all this uh, uh, US funding and NICE fundings. And uh, I love this. Uh, uh, I've shared a people that uh, best questions give you the best answer. So start asking questions for yourself, for your research, for your friends. And please, to me too. Thank you so much. And oh my god, this is uh, amazing. So this is go back to the history uh, from 2006 where I had a AS. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did not born yet <laughs> like this. So uh, I started losing that time and uh, he's Dr. Vishal here, uh, my dear friend. And we had a long, long, good time, bad time together with the PhD, with the postdocs, all over the time. Every time we are holding hands together, 